Two famous archaeologists were sitting in the study of a flat in the centre of Rome. Curious artefacts surrounded them, as well as thick cigar smoke which was hanging in the air. Kennedy was an Englishman in his thirties, born into a prestigious family of considerable wealth. He was intelligent, a brilliant researcher of classical Rome, but his studies were compromised somewhat by a passion for adventure and a love of womanising. His companion, Berger, was of German extraction and he had been Kennedy's acquaintance for several years. He was also a well-known academic, but his success came from hard work and plenty of study. He came from a poor background and he had little time for society because he was buried in his books. His solitude led to a poor understanding of others around him. I do wish you would tell me your secret, Berger. Where have these come from? As Kennedy spoke, he waved at the collection of artefacts on the floor. Berger just smiled and puffed on his cigar. There were a million more such artefacts in the new catacomb I've discovered. It's the finest and most important Christian tomb I have ever seen. Kennedy loved archeology span with a passion. His mania for early Christian relics was renowned all over Rome. Look here, I promise you can trust me not to write anything about the catacomb. It's natural that you would want to write the first report of your discovery. But if I search Rome myself and discover it without you, I will be under no obligation to remain silent. Berger smiled thoughtfully, exhaling smoke. I've noticed that when I want information from you, you are not so ready to supply it. When have you ever asked me for information and not received it? I gave you material about the Temple of the Vestals, for example, replied Kennedy. Ah yes, but that was not important. This new catacomb is intimate to me. Would you give me an answer about something so intimate? Of course I would. Well then, tell me about your relationship with Miss Mary Saunderson. What the devil do you mean, shouted Kennedy angrily. Is this some kind of joke? No, it's no joke, said Berger simply. I'm rather interested in the details. I don't know much about the world or women or society. I know you and I spoke to her once or twice. I'd really like to hear from your lips what happened. I won't tell you a word. A man who kisses and tells is the greatest coward. Okay, you have refused and I respect your scruples, answered Berger calmly. Hold on Berger, I think you are behaving ridiculously, but everyone in Rome knows this scandal already. I have nothing to lose whatsoever. So what did you want to know? Well, I understand that you didn't love this girl, because you were together only three weeks. But why would you damage your own reputation with a scandal for a girl you didn't even love? Kennedy looked at the fire moodily. I'm ready to admit I never really loved her, but I'm fond of adventures. I enjoy chasing pretty women. I learned that she was engaged, and this extra obstacle made it even more interesting. Mein Gott! Who was she engaged to? She mentioned no names, explained Kennedy. I never read about any engagement in the newspapers, Berger said with some surprise. The engagement was her secret, replied Kennedy. One more thing. How did you get rid of her in three weeks? She didn't want to come back to Rome once our relationship had begun. Rome is necessary to me. Then her father turned up at the hotel in London and there was an unpleasant argument in public. The scandal separated us. Don't repeat anything which I have told you to anybody. My dear Kennedy, I wouldn't dream of doing such a thing. All that you say interests me. I've seen so little of life. When would you like to come and see the new catacomb? The sooner the better. It's a beautiful night. Let's meet at the gate of Appian Way at midnight. I must return to my flat for matches, candles and a lamp. All right, Berger. I promise you I will, will write nothing at all until you have published your report. You will find me at the gate at 12. When Berger arrived, Kennedy had been waiting for 30 minutes. I see you are as passionate as, in work as you are in love, laughed Berger. They walked through the streets of Rome for 20 more minutes. 
and at last Berger stopped at a cow house. He took a key and unlocked the door. Surely the catacomb is not inside a house? The entrance to it is. The owner found some artifacts which made me suspect the entrance to a catacomb may be here. I rented the place from him and found the entrance. Berger led Kennedy to a corner with his lamp and picked up a few loose floorboards. Under them stone stairs led down into the earth. Kennedy, in his impatience, rushed down them. Be careful! If you lose your way you will never come out again. Wait until I bring the light. How do you find your way if it's so complicated? asked Kennedy. There is a certain system which I have learned using a ball of string. But every corridor divides and subdivides dozens of times. I want you to follow me closely and not wait to look at anything. I'll take you to the most interesting part directly. They went further down the stairs and started a long walk along the maze of corridors, sometimes turning left and sometimes turning right. Along the walls lay the skeletons of ancient Christians. Everywhere they could see manuscripts and artifacts from long ago. What would happen if the light went out? asked Kennedy. I have spare candles and matches. Do you have any? No, you'd better give me some. It's okay, there's no chance of us separating, Berger assured him. After walking for another 20 minutes into the heart of the labyrinth, Kennedy became excited. My God, look! A Christian altar! Perhaps the first in existence. They must have used this space as a church. Bring the lantern closer, Berger, so I can see everything more clearly. But Berger had started to stroll to the other side of the Great Hall. Do you know, Kennedy, there are over 2,000 wrong turns between here and the stairs. The Christians had to protect their church. The chances of finding it would be 2,000 to 1, but in the dark it would be far more difficult. Indeed! And the darkness is dreadful, Kennedy. I tried it once for an experiment. Let's try again. Berger suddenly put the lantern out, and the darkness squeezed tightly over Kennedy's eyes. He had never known such darkness. Go on, man, light the candle, Kennedy shouted. Berger just laughed, and his laughter echoed from all sides. It's very strange, Kennedy. In here I can't understand where you are. The echo makes it impossible. Could you tell me where I am? No, you seem to be on every side. If I didn't have this string in my hand, I would not know how to get out, remarked Berger. I'm sure, now put the light on and stop this nonsense, Kennedy begged him. Well, Kennedy, I understand you are fond of two things, obstacles and adventures. The adventure is to find your way out of this catacomb. The obstacle is the darkness and the 2,000 wrong turns. But please, don't hurry. And when you rest, think of Miss Mary Saunderson and whether you treated her fairly. You devil, what do you mean? He was running in circles trying to clutch the darkness. Goodbye, said the laughing voice. I don't think you did the right thing with that girl. But I know her secret, the man she was engaged to. It was a poor and ugly archaeologist called Julius Berger. The voice was already far away. Silence followed and closed round its victim like water on a drowning man. Two months later, the following article appeared in the European press. One of the most interesting discoveries of recent years is that of a new catacomb in Rome. Although Dr. Julius Berger, a young German specialist, is the first to publish this discovery, it appears that a le less than fortunate adventurer had anticipated him. Some months ago, Dr. Kennedy, the well-known English academic, disappeared suddenly and it was believed that a recent scandal had driven him from his house in Rome. In reality, he had fallen victim to a passionate love of archaeology. His body was discovered in the heart of the catacomb, and the condition of his boots made it clear that he had been walking for many days. The deceased gentleman had entered the labyrinth without taking candles or matches. Dr. Julius Berger was a friend of the deceased, and so his joy at the extraordinary find has been spoilt by a sadness at the terrible fate of his comrade and fellow archaeologist.